See, I think when you know your skill, when you know your craft, when you know your pedagogy, you know what you're doing, and you've been doing it long enough, there's something about a person who knows what they're doing, and you've got something to offer me, I'll listen. And, and, there's a, you know, and if I can speak your language, I can get to you a lot of different ways. I have more than one way to get to you. Now, I'm not saying a person of another ethnicity or another group can't teach a kid, but you've got to be able to hold my interest. And if my cultural interest is different than what you think it ought to be, then you may, you may diss me. You may, I may feel like you don't care enough about me for me to want to, you know, to stretch myself out and do what I think I need to do. A lot of black folks stayed in teaching because that was one of the most respectable positions you could get. I mean, I'm a teacher. I've been teaching for 40 some years. And when I was in school, when I came to the in my time, the, one of the most respected people in the community was a teacher. The teacher got more respect than the preacher. Teachers didn't pay very, didn't pay very much. My first teaching job, I got $3,700 a year. Now, uh, back in the day when I came out, that wasn't bad, but in Texas they were paying $4,800 a year, and I wanted to get out as fast as I could. It was just by the grace of God that I didn't get out because I, I didn't want to teach. Now, after I taught for a number of years, I guess I taught for two, and I, I, I enjoyed it because I, I saw what it did for people, for students. I saw how they treated me. It was a feeling I had never, I had never felt. And I, I contend this, and this applies to anybody who teaches. I think teaching is a, is a, is a gift. I think it's something that you're given from a, you're anointed to do. If you do it for the salary, I don't know anybody who would stay in it unless they can't find anything else to do. Like the guy said, I can't find anything else to do, but I guess I'm going to do something else. So, but I think a lot of black, and I don't get me wrong, there were some blacks when I taught, there were some blacks who taught for every payday. But there were a lot of them who had, once they, they were bitten by the same bug I was bitten by. And that is, I can help these people. And then, I don't know if they would have felt any different if they had been white people. Uh, uh, brown people. I'm not saying it's a racist thing. I'm saying that once you help somebody and you feel like you can do it, I just feel like blacks that I knew when I was in school, teachers who taught me, I loved them. And I thought they loved what they did because they, didn't, they worked beyond. They, they came early, stayed late, spent their money on things they didn't have to spend their money on, and they, didn't, they knew they weren't going to ever get it back, not the money back. But I think I know what they got back. Because when we had our reunions, where I came from, those teachers still would come as long as they could. They came to our reunions. And they, we respected them, and they respected us. And so that's a bond. That's that bond I'm talking about. That's that, that's that it takes a community to raise a child thing. And I think in the black community, because we had, we had been exposed to the same kind of treatment by the system. I think we, we knew that if we were going to change anything, we had to change it. But I, I like to think, based upon my experience, that the people who taught in the black schools at the time that I was in those schools were the best you could get. You know, they, they were better than anybody because they knew what to teach you and they knew how to get to you for me to stay in school. See, you can take the statistics. statistics. You can go back and look at how many kids dropped out of school back in the day that's dropping out today. That's the reason why kids didn't drop. Kids, they, they, well, they wanted to come to school then. We wanted to come to school. Segregation affected it, affected uh, education for blacks in, in a subliminal way. Because in those schools, my contention is that if you attended a black high school of the 3A, 4A, 5A caliber, I don't think we have 5A, but 3A and 4A schools in those metropolitan areas, there's a great possibility that you got the best education from 19, from the 1935 to 1967. You probably got the best education of any student in the state of Texas because the, the teachers that taught at those schools, especially if you came through, say, from 60, uh, you came through from, say, yeah, from 60 to 67, 
most of those people taught at those schools had been teaching at those schools for in excess of 15 years. Most of them had master's degrees. Most of them knew their craft very well. And continuity was there. So you had no discipline problem like you have maybe at some inner city schools today because the, the, the people who taught at those schools, the principals, the teachers, they taught your parents. They may have even gone to school with your grandparents. So you had that continuity, that family tie. And, and there was a bond between what was expected of the student and you knew the person in that school cared about you because they'd been there that long. They had some skin in the game. They lived in that community and they probably went to that school, maybe a uh, school similar to that themselves. So it was a, it was a hidden situation that uh, it's not because you have gone to the certain institution, it's because you have a, a love for what you're doing.